Didn't know today would be your last Or that I'd have to say goodbye to you so fast I'm so numb I can't feel anymore I'm praying you just walk back through that door and tell me that I was only dreaming You're not really gone as long as I believe <laughs> Okay, so okay, good evening good. colleagues um, uh, Honestly, I didn't know I'll be awake until this time um, Because my walk now is 24 hours uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm my major man. Anyway, um, my name is Adako Efuribe Ni Anyaun, and um, I live in the UK with my husband and two kids. They just turned um, 11 months yesterday. Um, yeah, I'm here to encourage some of our classmates that are still looking for the fruit of the womb or those that are even yet to get married. So there is hope. Yeah. <laughs> MDB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, so I finished and then um, pre reg was in uh, Abuja, Abuja Connection. We all stayed in our boys' quarter in uh, Banefo Street one day. Amaka was there, I think. Some of us, we just said Abuja Connection, just like joke, like joke. We are going to Abuja, Abuja Connection. And that was it. I found myself in Abuja. Um, Amaka was there. And Angie and uh, Francis, Tony and Emma, a whole lot of us, PK, Pakaro. Then I did my pre reg in the Ministry of Health. Then after that, Youth Service for Headquarters. Then from there, um, I got married when I was still in Abuja. Then I moved. Yeah, Ozzy, the baby, was also there. Amaka got married first, Ozzy got married. Then I now got married, <laughs> and I now, I now I got married 2007 um, September. That's yes. the white wedding. Then I moved to Lagos. Um, I, I only spent a few months in Lagos, and I left the country April 2008. So, and um, I've been in the UK since then. So right now, what am I doing? Okay. My day job, um, I'm a civil servant here. Yeah? I work with the National Health Service and um, I'm a senior um, pharmacist with the Integrated Care Board for Derbyshire County. Um, what else? Then also on the side, I'm also a prescriber, pharmacist prescriber. And I'm also um, a media clinician um, I do, um, um, I, I serve as a guest clinician in, um, in some TV stations. I also do a lot of writing, um, these day, um, launch a whole lot of newspapers. I can't start calling them now. And I'm also an advocate for the UN, um, SDG goals, sustainable development goals, and my area of concentration is goal three, good health and well-being. So that is what I've been doing. There will be another angel around the throne tonight. Your love lives on inside of me and I will hold on tight. It's not my place to question. Only God knows why I'm just jealous of the angels Around the throne tonight Hi everyone, just a quick input I hope you can hear me um, I listened to um, Stamina Halfway And um, congratulations Stamina And what you've done, what you've achieved We are impressed and, you know, more wins yeah, like Stamina said, um, I just want to point out this thing about lobbying. We have to take it very seriously, honestly. You use money 
to save money and you use money to save lives. I'll give you an example because this thing happening in pharmacy is not only in Nigeria, even in the UK. Yeah, ever since they bought that uh, Medica, nobody has rested. So it's still going on here. I'll give you a quick example. Right, um, we have prescribers. I'm an independent prescriber. Even Joy and most of us in the UK, we are independent prescribers. Um, I'll tell you how the government did it, you know. And I met there by saying, oh, pharmacists has to, they have to be here, they have to be, you have to push. So, you know, we need people up there to say enough is enough. This has to happen. And this is the way it happened. We lobbied like the GP surgeries, which is like the medical center, you know, the first spot of call when you're sick, you go to the GP surgery. You don't just go straight to the hospital. So we had to push in that pharmacists, they have to employ pharmacists in each GP surgery. And we must be, we, we know, we must be allowed to prescribe, you know. And, and, and the way they did it is like the last days I worked in, um, I was a clinical pharmacist and prescribing pharmacist. So we were supposed to save five billion pounds for the financial year because we are we're supposed to save it from cutting costs on drugs and all that. And to allow to well to force in quotes the GPs to employ us, they now gave them some money, stipend, told them if you employ this pharmacist and they save money in this surgery, we'll pay you. So the GPs we are even paid by the government. It's funny. The, the GPs were paid for, you know, by the government to place one or two pharmacists in their surgeries. So like Bansley, for instance, all the GP surgeries in, in, in Bansley had a pharmacist. So we were like up to 20 pharmacists. And at the end of the year, we saved five million pounds. And when they saw, oh, the government now saw, oh, a pharmacist has saved five million pounds. Then they now made it like mandatory. Do you understand? So, so the doctors didn't have any choice anymore. It became like a national law. So um, I'm not going to say me here, but it has to do with like, from like Stamina said, we need people there. The, you know, the lobbying has to be taken seriously because you cannot force them or do it by force. You know, in here and MF for like hundred years to make them change their thinking. Oh, that pharmacists can sit down, have a consultation in her office. I had an office. I told them I need my own office, and there pharmacists are dark under the door. So as the patient is coming you're coming to see either pharmacist because they already, you know, they already had nurses prescribing. So I was like, oh, you know, how can, you know, so I just wrote my name on the door. So as you're coming, I, I introduced myself. I'm a pharmacist. You know, this is what and what I can do. This is my area. So, so we were doing all this medicines review and, and people, we are, you know, we are living longer. People that had long-term conditions, we were saving lives. And when the government now saw, oh, people are living longer and we are saving money, MSA like a national, you know, law. Do you understand? So, so you know, we've stopped fighting with the doctors because they've now seen what we can do. So in Nigeria, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm not sure how we are going to do it, but I, I, I think we, we need more staminas up there to start with. We, you know, we need more staminas there, sort of. You know, that's the only way I can say it. <laughs> we don't just need people there that will just sit down. Naza, I'm, you know, I'm a rep, I'm a senator. Do you understand? We, you know, we need people that are forward thinking, you know, you know, you know, we need more people that would carry the business of pharmacy on their head. Abroad just they are sitting down there. Do you understand? So I don't know how we are going to do this. So maybe Amaka. Amaka is one person Amadekwa very sharp. Amaka the fast and sharp in Abuja. If you guys know how Amaka has, you know, risen in Abuja to the extent she's now in CBN. Amaka is in a very strategic place in Abuja. So Ndi ana aboja pakaro, no in a very strategic place. And our civil servants, like chinyere no, no here, no UPTH. We have chinyere in UPTH. We have people in, uh, in, in, in UNTH. We have our legs. So, um, some of those department meetings, let, let, you know, for instance, you start from your department meetings. You know, don't be absent. And in make clinical meetings, we, you know, we have to be represented. Then from there, you know, you can become a lead in an area in the hospital because you cannot just sit down and say this has to happen when you're not even a lead in the hospital. Like Joy is now developing herself. She's an advanced practitioner in a hospital and she's going to be a lead in a particular area.
Always made my troubles feel so small And you were always there to catch me When I'd 